Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to Pointless, the show where obvious answers mean nothing and obscure answers mean everything. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Paul. This is my fiancée, Lucy, and we're from Essex. Couple number two. Hi, I'm David from London, and this is my dad, who's also David, from Largs in Scotland. Couple number three. I'm Gabby, and this is my best friend, Millie, and we're students from Cheshire. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Paul. This is Mike, and we're from Glasgow. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thanks very much, all of you. We'll find out more about you throughout the show as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. His autobiography, Osmosis, will be available to buy as soon as he does something interesting. It's my pointless friend. <laughs> it's Richard. Hiya. Hi, everybody. Hiya. Oh, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Excellent. It's a very a familiar lineup. Isn't here. it? We've got three returning yeah. pairs. Uh, Lucy and Paul covered themselves in the most glory last time. They did very, very well. Uh, went out in a very tough head to head as well against our two head teachers, Brian and Adrian. Uh, but they played very well. It's going to be very tough to beat them, I suspect. Uh, Mike and Paul knocked out in the first round. Paul C. Second round, Millie and Gabby. Millie, a, uh, a politics student, got knocked out on a politics question. <laughs> which was awkward. She's going to have to do a lot to uh, make up for that today. Uh, but it should be an absolute cracker, I think. But Lucy and Paul were very, very strong last time. Um, thanks very much indeed, Richard. Now, as always, all of today's questions have been asked to 100 people before the show, and our contestants are on the hunt for one of those all-important pointless answers, that being an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Brian and Adrian won the jackpot last time, so today's jackpot starts off back at £1,000. There it is. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. OK, now remember, the pair with the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. Our first category today is... Science. Science. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many chemical elements with a vowel as the second letter of their name as they could. Chemical elements with a vowel as the second letter of their name. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for the full name of any chemical element in the periodic table as of January 2014, uh, which is the second letter as a vowel. So it's A, E, I, O or U, not Y. We won't accept that. So any full name which has a vowel as the second letter. Very best of luck. Thanks very much indeed. OK, so, Paul, welcome back. Thank you. Oh, ousted by Liza Minnelli. Um, I'm sure she's a great fan of the show. Unfortunately, I'm not a great fan of hers, so we, we didn't quite have enough. She is a big fan. Yeah. She is a big fan, and she will be watching. <laughs> OK, so, Paul, right, chemistry, how do we feel about that? Um, not brilliant, but I think, I think I've got one that I may have heard on this show previously, so I'm kind of hoping it is right and we can, I can use it again. Mm. So I'm going to go for curium. 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 Sounds good. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many people said it, if it is. It's right. That's a great answer, Paul. Very well done indeed. Curium scores you three. Good start to the round. Good start, Paul. Uh, picked up where you left off last time. The only chemical element named after two people, Mary and Pierre Curie. Uh, thanks very much indeed. David A. Great to have you here from Largs. Yeah. And uh, what do you get up to up in Largs, David? I do lawn bowls, indoor bowling, play snooker one night a week. Uh, but my big hobby is I'm a member of Millport Curling Club, so I'm a curler. Oh, really? You're a yeah. curler? So which, which, which is your role? Are you a, are you a sweeper well, or are you a...? I, I play lead, so... And the lead after they play the first two stones, they then sweep for everybody else. So. Right. But it's a good game. Okay. It's also um, part of my other passion, which is malt whiskey. So the two of them go together. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Now then, David, chemistry. Yeah, I've got a few. Um, I think I'll go for rather, uh, rather fordium. Rather fordium. Okay, sounds good to me. Let's see if it's right. How many people said rather fordium? Ah. <laughs> it's right. Well, three is our low score at the moment. Brother Fordium taking us down towards it. Oh, five. Very well done indeed. <laughs> what a start to the round. 
three well and four. Well played, David A. Yeah, named after Ernest Rutherford, the British physicist. They say he had such a loud voice that he would make uh, all the apparatus shake as his students were doing experiments. They had to put up a sign saying, talk softly, please. Good stuff. Uh, now then, Millie. Millie, welcome back. Hi. Uh, let's not talk too much about, yeah, about <laughs> William Roosevelt. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll draw a veil over that. Um, anyway, remind us what you do, Millie. Uh, I'm a student. I study something in Edinburgh. That's right. Uh, <laughs> philosophy and... Um, it's politics. Politics, it that's politics. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's yeah. right. Chemistry. Well, I got an A star in chemistry. Good. Let's this mention good. that so I don't seem so stupid. Um, so, I am going to go for a curveball. I need to redeem myself and I'm going to say Einsteinium. Einsteinium, says Millie. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It's right. <laughs> Well, five are high score, three are low. Let's see where Einstein ends up. Four, right in the middle. Look at that. Very well done indeed, Millie. <laughs> Einsteinian. Well played, Millie. That's a relief, I bet. That's uh, very good. You should change degrees. <laughs> you seem good at chemistry. Yeah, named after Steve Einstein, of course. <laughs> uh, thanks very much. Uh, now then, Mike. Hello. Mike, round one last time. We by lucky, I think. Yes. A little bit unlucky. Uh, remind us what you do, Mike. Um, I'm in the process of setting up a company with my, a business with my wife. It's early days. Okay. And you, you and Paul met in a in a shop, a sort of gift shop. Yeah, we used to work in a gift shop together. Um, worked together for about two and a half years. Yes. What, what about years. an art shop? What about an art supply shop? That'd be a fun thing to work. I in, used to work in an art supply shop many moons ago. But, so you know, uh, you know the ropes. You know the ropes, yeah. But I'd, it's the practical side of it, the doing that I would rather do than the selling side of things. So, um, Mike, what are you going to go for? I'm going to take a bit of a gamble, but I'm going to go for mitnerium. 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 M e i t. Mitnerium. 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 Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Good luck. It's right. Oh, I think this is going to be a brilliant answer, Mike. Again, five are high score, three are low. Mitnerium is pointless. <laughs> Very well done, Mike. That adds £250 to today's jackpot. Takes the total up to £1,250. It scores you nothing and earns you the respect of everyone. That's terrific play. Uh, yeah, very well played, Mike. See, that's the advantage of coming back to twice on the show. You can get knocked out so early and then come back with something like that. It's terrific. Named after Lisa Meitner. They should call it Mike Narium from now on in, uh, in honour of that answer. Mike Narium. Mike Narium. Thank you very much indeed. OK, well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. As they stand, nothing is the best score of that pass. Very well done indeed, Mike. That puts you and Paul in pole position. Then we travel up to three, where we find Paul and Lucy, four, Millie and Gabby, and five, David A. <laughs> I know. David G's got a lot of catching up to do That's there. Right. Um, <laughs> best of luck with that, David G. Uh, we'll see what happens in the next pass. But uh, best of luck to all four pairs. We're going to come back down the line now in the second place. Please step up to the podium. OK, we are looking for the name of a chemical element which has a vowel as its second letter, Paul C. Oh, well, you are set up there. <laughs> you are set up right up until you give your answer, Paul. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and remind us what you do, Paul. Uh, I work in call centre, so uh, the periodic table isn't exactly my specialty. How long have you done the call centre? Uh, since graduated, so about uh, seven months now. And you've enjoyed it? Still uh -huh. enjoying it? Yeah. Let's go with yes. How long? <laughs> we'll go with yes. Yeah, we can um, how yes. long are your shifts? Uh, not that bad, it's only eight hours. Eight hours? Yeah. Now, there you are, you're on nothing. You're on absolutely yeah. nothing. If you can score four or less, you won't even trouble the high scoreboard. Uh huh. Well, I don't think that's going to happen, but um, we'll go with what I know. Uh, so I'm going to go with helium. Helium? Mm -hmm. Okay, helium. There's your red line. Let's see how far down the column towards that you can get with helium. He's right. Oh, 39. <laughs> 39 for helium. It takes your total up to 39. Yeah, big score, but a correct answer. It's the only uh, non-metal to end IUM. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Now, um, Gabby, now, listen, Gabby, we have a goal. We have a goal now. We have a high score of 39. You're on four. 34 or less is your target. But um, let's just put that to one side for now. You are studying in Sheffield? Yes. 
Remind us what you're studying. French and business management. Of the two, be honest now, business management or French, which is the one that quickens your heartbeat? Got to say French. Got to stay loyal to my, to my language. Well, that's good. I'm glad you go, because French is more fun. <laughs> Much more fun. OK, now, how about chemistry? When was the last time you sat down and learnt chemistry? GCSEs. Mm -hmm. So about four years ago. OK. I'm going to say iodine. Iodine. OK, iodine. You want to score 34 or less. Helium scored 39. Let's see what iodine scores. Here is your red line. If you get below that, you're in round two. It's right, obviously. You've done it. Look at that. Ten. <laughs> Ten takes your total up to 14. You are through to the next round. Very good answer. Well played, Gabby. Safely through. Uh, it starts with two vowels. That's very nice, isn't it? So it does. Uh, now, yes, uh, David G. David G. We come to you. David, welcome. Thank now, you. you no longer live in Largs. Did you live in Largs when you were little? Uh, no, I didn't. At the, at the time, I lived just a little further down the coast. So I did grow up in Scotland, but right. I've been in London for a long time. OK, and what do you do in London, David? I'm an HR manager. Right, you are. And um, what do you get up to? What are, your, what, are your, what are your hobbies? The main thing I like doing is going to the theatre. I go to the theatre in London probably two or three times a week. Excellent. Good for you. Well, there you are on five. The high score is still Paul and Mike over there on 39. 33 or less. I've got some ones that are risky, and this one is, I think, not quite as risky, but I hope it's risky enough to get me down below. So I'm going to say beryllium. Beryllium sounds like a great answer. OK, here's your red line. Get below that, not too low. Get below that, you are through to the next round. Let's see how many people said beryllium. You've done it, David G. Very well done. 11. 11. 16, your total. It's six times stronger than steel, but lighter than aluminium. Interesting. Now, Lucy, Lucy, your turn. How many of your best answers have been taken by other people? I, there was a few, actually. Einsteinium was one of them. Oh. Um, but I've got a few, a few um, but I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing them right, so... L Laurentium and U Europeum. The one I'm going to go for, because I'm not sure about them, is Californium. Californium. Yeah. Californium. OK, when did you last do science, Lucy? Uh, GCSEs. GCSE. So over ten years ago. Did you, be honest now, did you learn about Californium from Pointless? I did. So did I. <laughs> In fact, I think I learned about nearly all my chemistry from Pointless. OK, there's your red line. If you get below that, you waltz through to round two. Let's find out how many people said Californium. It's right. And you're through to the next round. Very well done indeed, Lucy. That's a great answer. Three. Look at that. You equal Paul's brilliant answer. <laughs> Takes your total up to six. Well played, Lucy. We said you'd do well. Six points. Very impressive. Uh, let's take a look at some of the pointless answers, trying to remember some of these. Help us get our Nobel Prize. Uh, you could have had uh, Bacillium, Darmstadtium. Uh, there's Europium, I think, oh, is yeah. what you were going towards. Yeah, I, I, I think it's probably good you didn't go for it, because mm. we'd have had all sorts of trouble with pronunciations. Uh, Livermorium would have been a pointless answer. There's Mycnarium, uh, or Mycnarium. Rontgenium, uh, named after Rontgen. That would have been a pointless answer. Uh, you could have had samarium, seaborgium, or terbium. There's a few others you could have had as well. You could have had uh, coponicium, you could have had holmium, uh, you could have had uh, lanthanum as well. All of those are pointless answers. Very well done if you said any of those. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so at the end of our first round, the pair are going to be heading home with their high score of 39. Not that high. I'm, I'm so sorry that we, we, you never had your chance to shine. Um, anyway, it's been lovely having you on the show. Uh, thanks so much for playing. I'm sorry we're sending you home so soon, but uh, you've been great contestants. Paul and Mike. Thank you. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. So, three pairs remain. Obviously, at the end of this round, we'll have to say goodbye to another pair in time for our head-to-head -head round. But best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two is... Famous people. Famous people. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium.
OK, and the question concerns... People born in 1974. People born in 1974, Richard. Yeah, on each part, we're going to show you six clues to people born in 1974. You just need to give us the most obscure answer, please. It's going to be 12 in all to have a go at home. Very best of luck. Thanks very much indeed. OK, so we're looking for the names of these famous people, all of whom were born in 1974, and here is our first board of six. US sprinter, he won the men's 100 metres at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. Spice Girl, who had a 2013 hit duetting with Matt Cardle. Wine Expert, who's appeared on Saturday Kitchen and presented The Secret Supper Club. Croydon-born supermodel associated with the Waif look. Former Australian cricket captain, he led his side to victory at the 2003 and 2007 World Cups. And won BAFTA awards in 2013 for her roles in 2012 and Accused. I'll read those all one last time. US sprinter, he won the men's 100 metres at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. Spice Girl, who had a 2013 hit duetting with Matt Cardle. Wine expert, who has appeared on Saturday Kitchen and presented The Secret Supper Club. Croydon-born supermodel associated with the Waif look. Former Australian cricket captain, he led his side to victory at the 2003 and 2007 World Cups and won BAFTA awards in 2013 for her roles in 2012 and Accused. There we are. Six famous people born in 1974. Lucy. Wow, that's a... <laughs> I don't really know um, any of them. So I'm going to go for Croydon-born supermodel associated with the waif look and go for Kate Moss. Kate Moss, you're going to say. Kate Moss, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Kate Moss. That's right. 33. <laughs> 33 for Kate Moss. Yep, uh, a portrait of her by Lucian Freud sold for 3.5 million uh, in 2005. Uh, thanks very much indeed. OK, now David G. OK, this is a bit tougher than I thought it might be. Because yes. um, there are fewer people born in 1974 than I remember. Um, but I think I might know the last one of those who won the BAFTA awards. I think that might be the wonderful actress Olivia Colman. Olivia Colman, says David G. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. It is right. Very well done indeed. Four for Olivia Colman. And you're absolutely right, she is a wonderful actress. Uh, it is a tough board, though, isn't it? Yeah, uh, she is, is a wonderful actress, but it is a tough board. Both those things are true. Uh, now, Gabby, you're the last person to have this tough board. Do you think you can talk us through any of it? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, I did think Olivia Colman might have been right, but um, I'm going to have to take a guess at the Spice Girl, and I'm going to have to go with Mel C. You're going to go with Mel C? Mel C. Let's see if that's right. If it is, let's see how many people said Mel C. It's absolutely right. Very well done. 23. 23 for Mel C. Well played, Gabby. Yeah, everyone did very well to, uh, to get through that round with no 100s as well. Let's fill in the rest of the board. They're all low scorers. Uh, the Australian cricket captain, who would you go for for that? Oh, and Ricky Ponting. Ricky Ponting. Ricky Ponting. Yeah. <laughs> Would have scored you five points. Uh, the US sprinter. It's tough. Well done at home. If you said Maurice Green, would have scored you two points. And the wine expert. He's been on Point of Celebrities as well. It was lovely. Ollie, Ollie Smith. Smith. Yes, absolutely. Would have scored you one point. Thank you very much. We're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. Four, the best score of that pass. Very well done indeed, David G. Uh, then up to 23, where we find Gabby and Millie. Then up to 33, Lucy and Paul. Going against the grain there, slightly, as the high scorers. But, Paul, it's in your hands. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, we're going to put six more famous people up on the board, and here they are. We've got former British tennis player, four-time Wimbledon semi-finalist, played Jay Gatsby in the 2013 film version of The Great Gatsby, stand-up comedian and self-styled German comedy ambassador to the United Kingdom, US singer who had a 2010 UK number one with Forget You, 
architect. He has presented Restoration Man and the Empty Homes show and Scissor Sisters singer who appeared as a mentor on The Voice UK in 2012. I'll read those all one last time. Former British tennis player, four-time Wimbledon semi-finalist, played Jay Gatsby in the 2013 film version of The Great Gatsby, stand-up comedian and self-styled German comedy ambassador to the United Kingdom, US singer who had a 2010 UK number one with Forget You, Architect, he has presented Restoration Man and The Empty Homes Show and Scissor Sisters singer who appeared as a mentor on The Voice UK in 2012. Now, remember, we're looking for the names of these famous people, all of whom were born in 1974. Millie, you're on 23. If you can score nine or less, you'll avoid becoming the new high scorers. Well, I know one of them, but I don't know his first name and I've learnt my lesson, so I'm not going to go for him. Uh, so I'm going to have to go for the tennis player. It's a bit obvious, it's risky. Um, but I'm going to say Tim Henman. Tim Henman, says Millie. Tim Henman. OK, there's your red line. If you get below that red line, you are definitely in the head-to-head. -head. Let's see how many people said Tim Henman. It's right. 48. 48 for Tim Henman, 71 your total. Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting second pass now, I think. Um, yeah, four-time semi-finalist, also won an Olympic silver medal in the doubles. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Um, now, David A, there you are on four. Yeah. Um... 71 is a high score, so 66 or less gets you into the head-to-head. -head. Well, I think I know two. Um, one of them will be particularly high, I would think. So I think I'll go for the second bottom one. The architect who's presented Restoration Man and the Empty Home Show, I think, is George Clark. George Clark, says David A. George Clark. If you can get below that red line with George Clark, you're in the head-to-head. -head. Let's find out if it's right. Let's see how many people said George Clark. It's right. You are in the head-to-head. -head. Look at that! One! One, David A. That is fantastic. Takes your total up to five. Very impressive indeed. Limey, the Davids are pretty handy, aren't they? Aren't they? <laughs> Two rounds in a row. Phenomenal answers. Very well played, yeah. Um, OK, now then, Paul. Paul, little bit of pressure on you here. 71, the high score. You're on 33, so 37 or less sees you through. But you need to find a good low-scoring answer on that board from what is left. How do you feel about it? Um, I don't know one for definite, okay. which is the play Jay Gatsby, uh, which will be Leonardo DiCap DiCaprio. I'm unconvinced that'll be less than 30, so I'd rather have a gamble and one I don't know if it's right, and I don't know if I've got the name right in terms of pronunciation, but the stand-up German comedian, I only know one, there's not many. Um, so I'm going to go for Ralph Honigstein. Ralph Honingst Honigstein. Yep. OK, Ralph Honigstein, there is your red line. Let's see if you are right, and if you are, let's see how many people said it. Oh, no! I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer, Paul, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. Takes your total up to 133. Yeah, really sorry, Paul. There's more than one German uh, comedian, but there's only one German comedy ambassador born in 1974. It's the brilliant Henning Venn, who we've seen on all sorts of, uh, of TV shows. Henning's absolutely brilliant. Would have scored you eight points. Would have been a terrific answer. No. Uh, even worse than that, Jay Gatsby played by Leonardo DiCaprio, but not many people knew it. 16 points oh. it would have scored you. 16. That's really unlucky. Um, now, these other two, the US singer, had a 2010 hit, uh, that's CeeLo Green. He would have scored you 14, would have seen you through as well. And the Scissor Sister singer... Animatronic. ..is Animatronic, yep, and she would have scored four points. So, George Clark, David, best answer on that board. Thanks very much indeed. So, at the end of our second round, the pair heading home. I'm so sorry, so unfair to discover that you could have got through. A high score of 133, Paul and Lucy. It's been brilliant having you on both shows. Thank you so much for playing. Brilliant contestants, Paul and Lucy. Thank you. But for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. -head. Congratulations, David and David, Gabby and Millie. You are one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £1,200. Now, we have to decide who's going to play for that money, and to do that, you are now going to go head-to-head. -head. The big difference is you are now allowed to confer. And the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. I think this is going to be a very hard fought head-to-head. Best of luck to both pairs. Let's play it. <laughs> OK, here comes your first question, and it concerns... Queen songs. 
Queen, oh, Queen Songs, famous Queen from uh, Queen Songs, Richard. <laughs> We're going to show you five images now, all of which are visual clues that will lead you to the title of a Queen song. Which Queen song is most accurately represented by the images you're about to see? Good luck. OK, let's reveal our five Queen songs in visual clue form, and here they are. We have got... A. B. C. D and E. There we are, five Queen songs. Now, David and David, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you will go first. Feel free to confer. Which one? B. OK, um, yeah, thinking laterally is not very easy under these circumstances, so I'm... Uh, so I'm going to say the one thing that I can see, which is a hammer in B, and I think that might be hammer to fall. Hammer to fall, say the Davids, for B. Hammer to fall. Now then, Gabby and Millie, the board is all yours. Do you want to talk us through it? Do you get it? Yeah, I think I know three of them. A is bicycle. Oh, yeah. B's yeah, yeah. yeah. and C's <laughs> We Are The Champions. And yeah, then, D's We Will Rock You. And then um, Radio Gaga. E. I like E. e. I okay, think okay. we're going to go for E, Radio Gaga. E, Radio Gaga. So, we have Hammer to Fall and we have Radio Gaga. David and David said that B was Hammer to Fall. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said Hammer to Fall. It's right. Still falling. There we are, 22. 22 for Hammer to Fall. So, that is what you have to beat, Gabby and Millie when you say that E is Radio Gaga. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said that. It's right. Is it going to be tall? 35. 35 for Radio Gaga. Two excellent answers there, though, but the Davids pip it, and after one question, they are up 1-0. We'll play both teams there. There's only one answer that would have beaten Hammer to Fall. That's the top one. It's not called Bicycle, though. It's called Bicycle Race. Would have scored you 16 points. Would have been a very good answer. Um, C is, I think, as you all knew, We Are The Champions. Would have scored you 82. John Terry just out of shot there. Uh, and D is We Will Rock You. And that would have scored 54 points. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. So here comes your second question. Gabby and Millie, you get to answer this one first, but you have to win it to stay in the game, so best of luck. It concerns... Rabbits. <laughs> yep, rabbits. <laughs> Richard. Yeah, why not, eh? We're going to show you five clues now uh, to facts relating to rabbits. Can you give us the most obscure answer here? Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> OK, let's reveal our you, rabbits. You know what? What do you want from me? You write, yeah, <laughs> you write the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Let's reveal our rabbit-based facts, and here they are. We have got... Name of the rabbit that tries to teach Bambi to ice skate in the 1942 Disney film. The decade Beatrix Potter's The Tale of Peter Rabbit was first published. The term used for male rabbit. Title of Marjorie Williams's 1922 children's book about a toy rabbit. And the area where wild rabbits live and breed, including their system of interconnecting burrows. I'll read those all again. Name of the rabbit that tries to teach Bambi to ice skate in the 1942 Disney film. Decade Beatrix Potter's The Tale of Peter Rabbit was first published. The term used for a male rabbit. The title of Marjorie Williams's 1922 children's book about a toy rabbit. And the area where wild rabbits live and breed, including their system of interconnecting burrows. There we are. Five clues to facts about rabbits. Gabby and Millie will go first. OK, uh, we're going to relive our childhood and we're going to say the top one is Thumper. OK, Thumper. Thumper, say Gabby and Millie. David and David, do you think you can talk us through the ball? Yeah, the third one, <coughs> male rabbit, I think it's called a buck. Um, I think the bottom is a worm. That would make sense. Mm -hmm. Do you think buck or worm is better? I think we'll go for the I'm bottom. not sure either of them is as good as Thumper. No. no. We'll go for the bottom one, worm. You're going to go for Warren. OK, Warren. So we have Thumper versus Warren. Gabby and Millie said Thumper. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said Thumper. 
That's right. 50. 50 for Thumper. The Davids have said Warren. Let's see if that's right. If it is, let's see how many of our 100 said Warren. It's right. Oh, 63 for Warren. <laughs> Which means, well done, Gabby and Millie are back in the game. After two questions, it's one all. Yeah, you're right about Buck as well, but that wouldn't have got you through either because that scored 60 points. Buck, the name for male rabbit, also a male deer, male ferret, male rat, male kangaroo. Buck, 60 points. Uh, now, the title of Marjorie Williams' 1922 children's book is The Velveteen, Velveteen. Rabbit. Yeah, it's a beautiful book. Sort of about what it means to be real. It's a rather moving story. Seven points for that. Uh, there's a pointless answer up there. The decade. If you had to have a guess at that one, it's a pointless answer. 1920s? 1900s. 1900s is the right answer, yeah. Pointless answer. <laughs> Uh, very well done if you said that at home. Thanks very much indeed. OK, now, here comes your third question. This is the decider. Whoever wins this goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. It concerns... Authors with three names. Authors with three names, Richard. I'm going to show you the names of five authors now, all of whom are commonly known by three names, but we've missed out the middle one. Can you fill in the gaps, please? The team that gives us the most obscure answer is going through to play for the jackpot, so very best of luck. Thanks very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our five authors, and here they come. Francis Blank Burnett, The Secret Garden, James Blank Burke, Creole Bell, Alexander Blank Smith, Espresso Tales, Joyce Blank Oates, Blackwater, and Robert Blank Stevenson, Treasure Island. I'll read those all one last time. Francis Burnett, The Secret Garden, James Burke, Creole Bell, Alexander Smith, Espresso Tales, Joyce Oates, Blackwater, and Robert Stevenson, Treasure Island. Now, the Davids will go first again this time. We're going to go for the third one, um, which is, I think, Alexander McCall Smith. McCall Smith, say the Davids, McCall Smith. So, Gabby and Millie. The board's all yours. I don't know, too. Well, you do literature, so you do your thing. I do. What says when do I do literature? Do you better than me at school? Um, the top one, I think, is Francis Hodgson Burnett. He wrote The Secret Garden. OK, that's the one you're going to go for, Hodgson Burnett. So we have McCall Smith and Hodgson Burnett. Uh, the Davids have gone for Alexander McCall Smith. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right. Eleven. Good score. Gabby and Millie have gone for Francis Hodgson Burnett. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said that. Eleven is what you have to beat. It's absolutely right. How far down is it going to go? Is it going to beat eleven? Oh, twenty-two. Twenty-two, which means, David and David, after three questions, you are through to the final 2-1. Very well done, indeed. A valiant effort, Gabby and Millie, but well played, the Davids. There are two answers up there that would have beaten them. Uh, the bottom one wouldn't, that's uh, Robert Louis Stevenson. Uh, that would have scored you 73 points. But the other two would have done. It's Joyce... Do you know that one? I don't know that Joyce no. Carol Oates. She would have scored you seven. And the crime writer, James Lee Burke. And that would have scored you five points. Thank you very much indeed. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, I'm afraid it's Gabby and Millie. Well, what a performance. Great, really good show today. Done very well indeed. Um, but I'm afraid you came up against the Davids, who just beat you there. Thank you so much for playing. It's been great having you on the show. Thanks so much, uh, Gabby and Millie. <laughs> but for David and David, it's now time for our pointless final. Congratulations, David and David. You fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £1,250. As always, you get to choose your, your category for this round and there are four options to choose from. They are... East Londoners, 
cult sitcoms, artists in the Tate's collection, moons of the solar system. What do you want to go for? We'll go for East London. East, East London. East London. Best of luck. That's what they're going for. OK, good luck. Three very different questions for you here, so hopefully one of them suits you. We're looking for the names of any of the West Ham players who won the 1980 FA Cup. It includes substitutes who came on, not substitutes who didn't come on. Uh, we're looking for the names of any cast members of the first ever episode of EastEnders, so any actor credited in that first ever episode of EastEnders. Or we are looking for the name of any feature film made for cinema release for which Danny Dyer has received an acting credit up to January 2014, please. So any of the West Ham United 1980 FA Cup winning team, uh, any of the first EastEnders cast or any Danny Dyer film. Very best of luck. OK. Now, wow. as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. And to win that jackpot, all you have to do is find just one pointless answer among those three. Now, remember, the answers you provide can come from any of those categories. They could all be EastEnders cast, they could all be Danny Dyer films, or they could be one of each. It's entirely down to you. Are you ready? Yes. OK. OK, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. I don't know any Danny Dyer films. OK, I know I, th I can come up with several names for um, people in the First East Enders cast. Many of them are not going to be pointless, but there's someone like Bill Treacher, I think, who played... Bill Treacher. Bill Treacher, Treacher. I think, um, who was in there, and uh, John Altman, who's probably... These probably aren't pointless. Do you know anyone from West Ham United? The only one with Trevor Brooking, but I think he's probably... Um, can we go back to sitcoms, please? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, with the, so the Bill Treacher, um, June know. Brown is too obvious. Um, uh, um, Anna Wing was in um, was uh, was Lou Beale. Um, so I, I I think these might be our best bets if we go for Bill ten Treacher, seconds left. Bill Treacher, Anna Wing, and John Altman. Yeah, yeah. go for that. We might as yeah. well give those a try. Give them a try. Okay, OK, well, even before your time is up, you've landed on your three answers. Just give me those again. OK, so we're going for Bill Treacher. Bill Treacher. Anna Wing. Anna Wing. And John Altman. And John Altman. And they're all EastEnders cast members. OK, of those three EastEnders cast members, which do you think is your most obscure? The most obscure Bill is Treacher. probably Bill Treacher. Bill Treacher. We'll pop him last. In the wing, I'm not so sure uh, about. John Altman is probably the. John Altman is probably the most obvious. Okay, one. so John Altman will put first. Yeah. Okay, let's pop those up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got John Altman, Anna Wing, and Bill Treacher. Well, very, very best of luck. Three excellent answers up there on the board. Let's hope at least one of those is pointless. Your first answer was John Altman. This was the one you thought was probably least likely to be pointless, but you never know. It could be. If you were to win that jackpot, £1,250, what would you spend it on, David? For me, um, we had my partner and I had our house done up um, a couple of years ago, and the builders left a lot of very useful building materials in a back garden. Two years later, they're still there, and I'd quite like the garden to become a garden again rather than the builder's yard. OK, very good. David, I have a hunch. It's going to be some malt whiskey involved in this. <laughs> that would be number one priority. But yeah. I think I'd have to take my wife a holiday first, I think. Well, take her to space. We could, we could take her on holiday with her malt whiskey. OK, perhaps. there you are. <laughs> there you are. Best of luck. As I say, three good answers there. John Altman was your first. Let's find out. John Altman, in all three cases here, we are looking for original cast members of EastEnders from the first episode ever transmitted. Uh, let's find out. John Alton, is that right? And if it is, how many people said it? It is right. Down it goes, tearing through the 40s and the 30s, the 20s into the teens. If this goes all the way to zero, you leave all one. One for John Alton. <laughs> well... Unfortunately, not a pointless answer, but I have to say it's looking very good for your wow. next two answers. John Altman, you thought, was far and away the, the, the best known of those three names. So let's see okay. where we get with your next answer, which is Anna Wing. Obviously, this has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. So for £1,250, let's see how many people named Anna Wing as a cast member from the first ever episode of EastEnders. It's right. Well, your first answer, John Altman, took us all the way down to one. Anna Wing now taking us down through the 20s, down through the teens, into single figures, still going down. Oh, one again! Oh! A 
wing and a prayer. Which means <laughs> yeah. everything is now riding on your third and final answer, Bill Treacher. <laughs> oh, best of luck. Please, please, can this go down to pointless? You said this was your most confident shot at a pointless answer. Yeah, it I has thought so. to be pointless. <laughs> It has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot for £1,250. Let's find out how many people said Bill Treacher was in that first episode of EastEnders. It's right. So John Altman took us all the way down to one. Then Anna Wing took us all the way down to one. Bill Treacher now taking us down in single figures. Oh, no! Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that, that, I think, is one of the unkindest last rounds <laughs> I have witnessed for ages. One, one, one. <laughs> oh, I was sure those la one of those last two, at least, was going to go down to pointless. Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that pointless answer, which means you don't win today's jackpot of £1,250. That will roll over onto the next show. But, my goodness, you have been fantastic <laughs> the whole way through the show. And uh, you do get to take home a pointless trophy each. Thank so uh, at least there's that to take home. But very, very, <laughs> very well done. Guys, nice. that is unlike, that doesn't happen very often. That's the best you can possibly play without winning the money, I'm afraid. <laughs> and you played terrifically all the way through as well. Let's take a look at the pointless answers in all the different categories. We'll start with the, uh, the West Ham team. There are only four pointless answers here. David Cross, who I know watches the show, he's tweeted me before about various answers. Jeff Pike, as well, was a pointless answer. Phil Parks, the goalie. Uh, Ray Stewart, the defender, he was a pointless answer as well. Let's look at EastEnders. There's four pointless answers here. Leonard Fenton, who played Dr Leg, was a pointless answer. Nejet Sally, who played Ali Osman, uh, my namesake. Sandy Ratcliffe, she played Sue Osman, Ali's wife, she was pointless. And uh, Shreela Ghosh, who played Naima, she was pointless as well. Well done if you said any of those. And the final one, Danny Dyer film. It's been in a lot of films, Danny Dyer. Adulthood, the follow-up to Kidulthood. Free Runner, High Heels and Low Lives with uh, Mini Driver and Malice in Wonderland. All of those pointless answers. There's a couple of others you could have had. You could have had Goodbye Charlie Bright, The Rapture, uh, Green Fingers, Jack's Head and Tabloid. All of those pointless answers. Very well done if you said that. Got so unlucky, guys. It's been such a pleasure having you on the show. <laughs> and in some ways, getting three one-point answers is uh, puts yes, you down in pointless history. It. Uh, it just uh, doesn't uh, fill the pockets, I'm afraid. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed. Well, unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to you, David and David, but we've loved having you on the Thank show. You. you have been absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for playing. David and David. Well, very, very sadly and very unluckily, the Davids didn't win the jackpot today, which means it rolls over onto the next show when we will be playing for £2,250. <laughs> Join us next time, see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>